Good evening, everyone. On January 6, 1914, the Portage Lake Flyers hockey team visited the Calumet Wolverines in the first game played at the Calumet Coliseum. On January 6, 2014, the Portage Lake Pioneers make the short trip back to Calumet for the 100th anniversary. Coliseum has undergone a number of changes, of course, during that time. This season, the old Michigan Tech hockey scoreboard made its debut. It was supposed to go to D Stadium in Houghton, but there just wasn't enough clearance from the ceiling. The siren is still quite loud when the Wolverines take the ice, but it was silent in the first period except for one false alarm. Portage Lake goalie Mike Wuthrich was busy in the opening 20 minutes. He made several good saves and the Wolverines hit the goal post three times. Brett Randall finds the post here and the puck Kareem dangerously close to the goal line. Wuthrich recorded the shutout four goals to none. And by the way, Portage Lake won the game 100 years ago, four to two. We'll have more on the Coliseum on tomorrow's early news. Well, it's been quite the week for former NMU hockey player Justin Florick. The 23-year-old was the first Marquette native to play in the NHL, making his debut this past Saturday for the Boston Bruins. The forward will travel with the team for its West Coast road trip, filling in for Justin Curran, who is battling a sore back. If Curran is unavailable for the Bruins game on Tuesday, Florick will be seeing some ice sometime on the ice against Anaheim. During his NHL debut against the Jets, he totaled over 10 minutes of ice time and helped the Bruins score two of their four goals. Well, two Nagani Miners are taking their talents to the Superior Dome. Running back Tyler LaJoy and wide receiver Zane Radloff have both verbally committed to playing football at NMU next season. Both players helped the Miners to a 10-2 overall record this year, along with a trip to the Division VI Regionals. LaJoy was named Co-Offensive Player of the Year in the Mid-Peninsula Conference, also earning first-team honors in the AP Division VI All-State Football Team. LaJoy totaled over 1,300 rushing yards and 23 total touchdowns on the season. While Radloff was part of the large school special mention, finishing with 319 receiving yards and a touchdown during the regular season. The first day high school football players can sign their national letters of intent is on February 5th. NMU's Justin Newell was named the GLIAC North Division Player of the Week. He played a key part in the team's two most recent wins against Tiffin and Ohio Dominican, scoring a career-high 27 points over the Dragons, along with a team-high 16 points over the Panthers. On the season, he averages around 14 points per game for the Wildcats, as the men have now won two consecutive GLIAC games. The team is back in action this Thursday at Ashland. And in a boys basketball game that was not postponed, St. Ignace wins by three points at home, 59-56 over Rudyard. Gage Kresge led the Saints with an impressive 40 points. Well, it's not every day you can drive a car without having a legal driver's license. Well, 15-year-old Gladstone native Jordan Ives is doing just that. Coming from a racing family, he started the sport at the age of five. When he was just 14 years old, he became Rookie of the Year and was named the youngest driver to race late model cars at Norway Speedway. Ives recently entered the Champion Spark Plugs 2014 Search for a Champion contest, where he's hoping to win money to help fix up his number 18 Monte Carlo SS race car. He says he couldn't have gone through the journey without the support from his family and local community. Our race team came together and we just looked back on all the generations of racing in our family and uh, we just wanted to involve that in uh, my racing history. I'm thankful for all of my supporters and just the local community coming together, sharing uh, my video on Facebook and just voting for me. Also in the competition is Escanaba's Danny Boshaw. Ives' next race will be on the Escanaba River for the Great Lakes Ice Racing Series. The Mid-America Snow and Terrain Expert Racers Ojibwa Casino Series made its 2014 debut over the weekend at the Antonacci County Economic Partnership Snow Drags. The object is simple, get your snowmobile down the 1,000-foot course faster than your opponent. Drivers from the UP, Wisconsin, and Minnesota participated in a series of sprints in 13 classes, ranging from 120cc to Top Gun and vintage models. Multiple class winners included Matt Lacoste of Champion, Jerry Bushel of Lake Linden, and Louis Goldbach of Iron River. The Masters Ojibwa Casino Racing Series glides down to Sogola for the tip up town snow drag Saturday, February 1st. The hill climb and snow drag event is set for mid-February in Caspian. Other stops on the tour include Iron Mountain, Florence, Duluth, and it concludes April 5th and 6th in Marquette.
highlights, visit our website upformichigansource.com. So Florida State's coming back. Don't tell me that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game. You know what? It yeah. was 21-3 at one point, but back comes Florida State. Jameis Winston playing phenomenal in the second half. So we'll see what happens. You know, Auburn is 6-0 and in one possession games this year. So we'll see if they can pull it out. They always have a miracle, don't they? <laughs> they right. do. Thanks a lot, Lily. Coming up, it's a sled race that's not for the weak of heart, but it does help to be a bit crazy. We'll show you why next, but first, here's Jay Leno.